Good afternoon everybody. So the purpose of this video is just to give you the mechanics on how to perform confidence interval testing and hypothesis testing in JMP for both proportions and for um, not only for proportions but also for means. So uh, we're going to be taking a look at uh, both a data file for proportions and a data file for means and we're going to be going through all four of those um, processes. Um, there won't be any theory in this uh, video, it's just to show you the mechanics and then you'll use the theory from our lecture um, in the previous class to uh, apply to the results you get from JMP. So for my uh, video today, I'm going to be using the raw data file uh, that is on eLearn. It's the uh, class survey that went out that you all took. And I'll be using one called voting.jmp. And that one is going to be for our hypothesis testing and our confidence intervals for proportions. Um, you won't be using that one for the problems that I'm assigning you. You'll be using the one called Tau Chemical. Uh, but uh, that's okay. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, you'll, we'll, uh, this is, will be, this will be a good example. Okay, so, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into JMP. The first one we'll cover today is confidence intervals for proportions. So let me go ahead and I'm actually going to open up the um, the voting.jmp file. And for yours, you'd be um, opening up the uh, survey one, the raw data one because you'll be doing it on uh, right-handed versus left-handed people. So here I'll be opening up uh, voting.jmp. So in my table here uh, we're looking at the votes for a candidate for Senate um, out of a sample and you see my sample has uh, 64 respondents. It was uh, 64 people I sampled and uh, they either said they were going to vote yes or vote no for the candidate. So I want to be able to uh, see if it's equally likely um, that people will be voting for a candidate. It would be kind of interesting to know. Um, and somebody wants for me uh, my confidence intervals on whether or not a person will be voting for a particular candidate. So I'm going to provide both the 90, the 95, and the 99 percent confidence intervals. So let's start by uh, you select the column that you want to get the confidence interval for for the proportion. So obviously I only have one column, so I'll select that one. I go to Analyze, and I go to Distribution. Uh, I drag the column into the Y columns area that I want to analyze, and I click OK. All right, so I have a very uninteresting histogram here, obviously, since there are only two different results. And I then click the red arrow or the red triangle next to vote and I am going to go ahead and do a confidence interval of either 90, 95, or 99. So we might as well start with 90. Okay, and then we can do the same thing for 95 and then again for 99. Okay, so here's my 90% confidence interval my 95% confidence interval, and my 99% confidence interval. So from that, depending on whether I want to know the confidence level of whether someone was voting yes or for no, I will have all of my confidence intervals, the lower and the upper, for both yes or for no for that. Okay, So then you'll be able to state those appropriately, uh, depending again whether or not the person wants to know the confidence of whether they're going to get a yes vote or a no vote. Okay, so that's the mechanics for doing confidence intervals for proportions. So we'll go ahead and close that. So I'm going to use the exact same data set now to do a hypothesis test for proportions. So we might as well get the proportions out of the way first, and then we'll do it for the means. So I'm going to use the same exact data. And um, basically, somebody on the candidate's election committee is telling me that it's, they believe it's equally likely um, in this particular area of the state that this candidate will get a yes or a no vote. There's no uh, sway either way. They don't feel that this candidate is more fully supported here or less supported here in this area. They believe it's equally likely. So to prove that wrong um, or to prove it not wrong, 
Uh, remember, we're not proving something correct. We're just either rejecting something or failing to reject um, a hypothesis. I'm going to go ahead again, select the column that I want to analyze, go to Analyze, and I'm going to go to Distribution again. So it's the same process as when you were doing confidence intervals. I'm dragging it to my Y column and clicking OK. But now instead of uh, doing confidence intervals, I'm going to go ahead and click Test Probabilities. <coughs> so it's asking for input, and uh, it's asking what is your hypothesized probability for both yes and for no. So I was telling you that the person on the election committee um, thinks that it's equally likely that this candidate will get a yes or a no vote. So my hypothesized probability for no is 50% or 0.5, and my hypothesized probability for yes is also 0.5. Okay, so that's, uh, that's what you would put in there. So that's kind of your null hypothesis. Now, below that, you're going to pick one of the three um, one of the three options below. If you're doing a two-tailed test or exploratory hypothesis, then you want this one, the two-sided test here. If you're thinking the probability is greater than the hypothesized value, so if you think that um, <coughs> you think that the uh, candidate may get more yes votes and not is not equally likely to get a yes or a no vote, then you'd pick this one. And if you think the candidate is uh, not equally likely and will get less yes votes, you'd pick the bottom one. I'm going to do a two-tailed uh, hypothesis test, so I'm going to go ahead and click uh, Done. And you always are going to look at the Pearson result down here. Don't use the likelihood ratio. We're going to always use the Pearson one. That's the Pearson product coefficient. It's a much more uh, it's a much more accurate one. So I'm going to use the Pearson one and this value right down here in the lower right under probability is your p-value. So that's your p-value for that. So using what you learned in the lecture you can decide whether or not uh, you're going to reject your null hypothesis or fail to reject your null hypothesis. Obviously you will have to state your null hypothesis as well as your alternative one and then tell me uh, what the p-value was for your particular uh, scenario that I'm giving you in your homework, as well as whether you're rejecting the null hypothesis or failing to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so that is a hypothesis test for a proportion. So let's go ahead and open another JMP file. We're going to open the raw data file, which is called survey ABCDE. And here we go. All right, so we're going to do a confidence interval for a mean and a confidence interval for, I'm sorry, a confidence interval for a mean and a hypothesis test for a mean. Those are the two we're going to do. Um, so basically, I just need a numeric column here. I'm going to use height, uh, and I'm going to assume that these are average heights because remember, we're doing these for means. Um, so uh, I have one right here. And um, basically, <coughs> I am going to, uh, we're going to go ahead and do a confidence interval one first. So for the height, I am going to uh, give the 90, the 95, and the 99% confidence interval. And again, I'm going to assume these are mean heights and these aren't individual values, even though they are, but we'll just assume um, that they're means. So uh, you're again going to go to Analyze, and you're going to go to Distribution. And here in the Y columns, you're going to drag the column of interest, which in our case is height. And we're going to click OK. OK, so we have our histogram here. Uh, I like to turn the histogram on its side. To do that, you click on the little red arrow. You go to Histogram Options and uncheck the vertical option, and it'll rotate it for you. Now remember, one of our conditions is the nearly normal condition here. And when I look at my data, um, it does look pretty normal. It looks unimodal. It's not multimodal. Um, not looking at any really big um, outliers or anything like that. So it looks pretty good. And remember, for all of these tests, both confidence intervals, hypothesis testing, don't forget about all the assumptions and conditions that have to be met uh, before you even do any of these uh, tests in JMP. So it's really not worth it if it's not going to, uh, to help at all. Okay, so once you do that, you do the exact same thing here to get your confidence intervals that you did with 
uh, the proportions. So you go up to the red arrow and you go to confidence interval and I'm gonna get my 90, my 95, and my 99. And so here they are, your 90, your 95, and your 99. Remember you're getting your confidence interval for mean, so don't use the standard deviation at all. Uh, you don't want to do that. So you're going to want to make sure you use your, your means uh, area here. And here's your lowers and your uppers. So again, using the lecture that we did a couple weeks ago, you should be able to um, go ahead and state those appropriately. Okay, So that is confidence intervals for means. Okay, so now we're going to do a hypothesis test for means. And for this, um, I can't use the raw data values here from the survey because they, they don't really lend themselves to a, a hypothesis test for means. So I'm going to go ahead and open a file that I have uh, called uh, sales data. And if you remember, this is kind of going back to, oops, this says MPG. It's not supposed to say MPG. It doesn't really matter. but. Uh, so this is going to kind of go back to uh, the example we did in class uh, last week when we were looking at that uh, video on YouTube regarding um, testing giving away a sticker with the sale of a chocolate bar versus not giving away a sticker with a sale of a chocolate bar. So that's what we're kind of wondering. We're trying to see does adding the free sticker to the sale of the chocolate bar um, actually help or does it hurt it or does it have no effect? on it. So that's kind of what we're interested in. So um, we think we want to prove that having the sticker does help um, the sales of the chocolate bars, um, but of course um, we need to be able to prove that. So you have to go ahead and state your null hypothesis, which again is usually the status quo. You're going to state your alternative hypothesis, what we're trying to prove, um, and then go ahead and compute the hypothesis test. So to do it, um, this is a little bit different. Uh, and now we're going to go to analyze. Instead of distribution, we're going to go to fit y by x. Okay. So in your x factor is basically what the treatment is that you're giving. Remember, the treatment is what you're doing. So in this case, the treatment is whether it's a sticker or no sticker. So your x is your treatment. And your y are your sales, what you think are being you think are responding, your response variable, to the treatment. So that makes sense that they belong in those areas. Okay, You click OK. And uh, here they are, uh, graphed out. And, and as you see, uh, here's your no sticker treatment and here's your sticker treatment. I mean, they're looking, uh, I mean, almost equal. You know, you have some spread here, you have a little bit of an outlier. So we're really not sure just by eyeballing it. And you really should never eyeball it. You really should actually go ahead and do the hypothesis test. So I'm going to go ahead to perform the hypothesis test. I'm going to click the red arrow, and I'm going to go to t-test. So you're going to click on the t-test. Okay. So down here on the bottom right of your all your stats, you get a whole lot of stats here, but you really these three are the ones you're most concerned about. Okay. This first one, probability of um, point, uh, probability is greater than t, and you notice this is a uh, this is an absolute in absolute value uh, brackets. So you'll see probability here is 0 0.0311. So this is your p-value right here. Now the reason why there's three of them is this top one here is a two-tailed test. So if you're interested in whether or not the sticker improved sales or actually hurt sales, uh, you would use a two-tailed test. So we really just wanted to prove that we think s sales are going to increase with the sale, with the giving away of the free sticker. So we're interested in this one, okay? So this is it. So again, we are looking to see if the probability increased, that's why there's a greater than sign here, increased with the giving away or of the free sticker. And so here's my p-value. So remember we said if p is low, null must go because uh, if p is lower than our alpha level, and remember our alpha level is always 0 0.05 unless I tell you otherwise, but I never will. So this is 0 0.0156, which is lower than 0 0.05, so it is lower. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis. If our alternative hypothesis were that we think sales are actually going to decrease, that would have been this one. So the probability 
of making a sale decreases, so we think sales decrease with the treatment, okay, um, our p-value would have been 0.98. So if that were our alternative hypothesis, then we would have not failed to reject the null hypothesis, okay? So that's how you perform a hypothesis test with means in JMP. So that's all four of them, uh, both the confidence intervals and hypothesis tests for proportions, and confidence intervals and hypothesis tests for means. So while you're playing around with uh, the four problems I gave you, if you have any questions, feel free to see the TA during the review session, um, or you can, of course, um, ask me next week in class. So hopefully this helps you out, and uh, good luck. Thanks.